Are you a short-term rental host looking to attract more guests and earn more income? If so, you might be missing out on three types of guests that are often overlooked by many hosts. In this video, we'll explore these three types of guests. And then we'll give you some tips on how to appeal to them. Whether you're a seasoned host or just getting started, this video is a must watch for anyone looking to maximize their short-term rental earnings. So let's dive in. The first group of guests you probably forgot about when setting up your short-term rental are families with young kids. In our own short-term rental properties, we've always made it a focus during our setup to attract more families. In our beach properties, we have toys and boogie boards. And then in our desert property, Saguaro, we installed a playground and a putting green. For pool safety, we installed these plastic burglar bars that go high up on sliding doors to prevent kids from opening the doors on their own. And we also leave a splash alarm at the house so that guests can install it if they want. When we onboard new clients, we always suggest that they provide family amenities, even if it's just a basic set, if they're not, you know, too keen on the whole idea. And you can access this list in the description box below, which includes all of the items that we're about to go over with you, plus direct links to each item to make it easy for you to set up your short-term rental property for families. On this list are a pack and play with a memory foam mattress insert, and then also a waterproof set of crib sheets. They're soft, but the waterproof is nice and they won't soak through onto your mattress insert. Also on the list is a high chair, and we have a favorite one that wipes down easily. It also has a removable tray so that you can wipe that down in the sink or even throw it in the dishwasher if you need to. And it folds away pretty nice and compact for guests who won't use it. Other baby amenities that we like to see are outlet covers and infant bath seat. Or if it's a property with no bathtub, we also have these like little infant bath totes and a seat that they might, they collapse. Might, might help out someone with a pretty small baby. Families with toddlers and younger kids appreciate the kids' cups and bowls and plates and utensils that we keep in the kitchen. And they also appreciate the local recommendations that we give, like where to find the nearest playground, or sometimes in our house manual, we'll list family-friendly things to do in the area, or we have the blog on our website, which has lots of posts about family activities in each area where we operate. Lawn games are another fun addition that even adults will enjoy as well. This could be something big like a putting green we mentioned or a play set, or it could be something small and removable like a giant Jenga set or some of our properties have like a bag toss game. Game rooms with like arcade games or ping pong or foosball are also becoming more popular. So consider that if you have the space to accommodate it. Yeah, if you have the space, I think it's important. Don't try and cram everything into one place if you have a small spot. The second type of guests you might have forgot about when you set up your short-term rental are pet owners. <laughs> This is such a personal preference and people usually have a very strong opinion on whether or not they should be allowing pets in their short-term rental property. And we're not saying you should allow pets if it's something you're not comfortable with. Honestly, we don't advertise as pet friendly at many of the properties in our portfolio, typically because that's the client's preference, but it is something that you could consider. On our client intake form, we ask people, owners, if they would like to allow pets, they'd like to like make any rules like size or non-shedding breeds or things things like that, and then we note that when we're dealing with potential guests. It's very rare that a client will check the box for, yes, I want to be a pet friendly property. Most of the time they say that they don't want to advertise as pet friendly, but if somebody comes and says, you know, they have a smaller, non-shedding, well-behaved dog, blah, blah, then they would allow it for an extra fee. At the moment, in our short-term rental properties, we don't provide any pet-specific amenities. But we do have a few clients with mid-term rental properties that do allow pets. And overall, we definitely get more requests at mid-term properties uh, to allow pets than at short-term rental properties. Which makes sense because it's a lot easier to find someone to watch your dog for a weekend than it is for a whole month. So at those midterm rental properties, we do provide some amenities, pretty basic stuff, water, food bowls, a dog bed. It just makes you know someone's life a little bit easier when they're traveling with that pet. And just like how if you can provide your guests, any short-term rental guests with a few cleaning supplies, they're more likely to clean up after themselves during their stay. Same thing goes for pet owners. They're more likely to clean up after their pet if you provide them the essential supplies. Yeah, so definitely have a vacuum in the house. We also like to leave a lamp roller, like clean up any hair that they see. And maybe some spot cleaning spray or something like that. One thing we're starting to add to some of the properties slowly 
is a pooper scooper. We were finding that those few guests that we would allow to bring a dog weren't cleaning up after their dog outside, probably because there wasn't anything to clean up with. So hopefully having these at the properties is just a little bit of a visual reminder to clean up after your dog. Just remember in most states, especially like California where we primarily operate, service dogs are always going to be allowed. So there might be pets in your property no matter what your policy is. So even if you choose to not be a pet friendly property or not allow pets, you might still get service animals. So consider picking up at a minimum, a scooper and a lint roller for your cleaning team. Lint rollers are good to have anyways. A third guess that you probably forgot when you set up your short term rental is the type that has to work while they're on their vacation. So sad. It's pretty common knowledge that there's been a huge increase of people working remotely over the past few years. And a short-term rental host can capitalize on that rise of the digital nomad culture by providing a few amenities that appeal to those workers. Here are four ways that you can attract more of those digital nomads to your property. The first thing is to have a desk with comfortable seating and good lighting. And it doesn't have to be a huge desk. We don't want to have you cram this giant desk into a small space, but just make sure that there's enough room to spread a few things out and work comfortably. Second and sort of related is to have a quiet place where someone can work. We like to try and fit a desk into a bedroom if possible, a place with a door that can close for privacy and noise control is important. Third is providing a discounted rate for longer term stays. So if your property is marketed primarily as a short term rental and you're on Airbnb, there is a section on Airbnb where you can put in a rate specifically for a month that's different than your nightly rates for shorter stays. Yeah, just a way to incentivize having someone book your place for longer that, that might be out and about, you know, doing the digital nomad lifestyle. The fourth area is to have fast and reliable internet. For digital nomads or really anyone just trying to work while they're on vacation, having fast and reliable internet is essential. Honestly, I think this is important to most all guests these days with streaming and kids games and stuff like that, but make sure you focus on good, fast, and reliable internet. The internet service provider that you choose does matter. I know that sometimes if you're in a small rural area, you won't have a lot of choices, but if you do have a choice, make sure you're doing your research beforehand to see which ones are reliable and not having a bunch of outages. Maybe join a local Facebook group if you're not local to the area and see what others are using. You might have to pay like a fairly decent amount for a nice fast plan, but I think this is a really good investment for guest experience. Yeah, considering that you might have to start handing out refunds if your internet's dropping all the time and people are relying on that. So that is an essential amenity and it's worth the splurge sometimes. We'd also recommend a router upgrade if you're currently using the sort of rented model from your ISP. We've talked about this in our smart home video, but likely you might be paying a rental fee for the router from the ISP, which honestly is trash. So. <laughs> Spend some dollars, upgrade to a nice router. You'll see the difference in stability of your internet. Spend some money on the router, but you'll also be saving on the monthly rental fee. So over time, it'll wash out. Yeah. Historically, we've relied on the Netgear Orbi series, but we've recently also been adding in the Amazon Eero models, and those have been working well. The key thing here is those routers allow us to look at diagnostics and remote access. So if there is guests having issues, we can usually remotely troubleshoot them get them on their way. Another popular router that we don't have firsthand experience with yet is StayFi. And these are becoming more and more popular because they can also be used for email collection. Guests get a landing page with StayFi where they have to put in an email address to get access to the internet. You see this in airports and hotels and things. It's a way to collect emails. The main reason we haven't changed over to StayFi is because we have high quality routers at all of our properties and changing out over 40 of them would be a pretty big expense. But if you're just getting started or still using that rented router from your ISP, then switching over to something like StayFi could be a really good option for you, especially if you're trying to grow your email list. And we'll leave a link to their site in the description box below. It seems like a great tool for email collection. And if you watched our direct booking video, you know that email marketing is something we're gonna focus big on in 2023. And it's something that you should be considering as well. So if you missed that video, we'll link it here on screen so you can check it out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.